Hi, today we'll be coding something similar to the previous video. It is going to have a lot of things in common and at the same time it is going to be very different. But let's get started so you're going to see what I have in mind. We're going to have a number of layers. Six. And we're going to have a number of repetitions per layer. Six. Number of dots per repetition. Also six. This resembles a song title. Screen for Halloween internet. Nope. <laughs> Cringe worthy. I shouldn't have said that. I don't like the shape of those words coming out of my mouth. Okay, goof up aside. We are going to compute the total number of dots per layer, which is going to be the number of repetitions per layer times the number of dots per repetition. Then we're going to get the total number of dots for our demo, which is going to be the number of layers times the number of dots per layer, which we've computed a bit earlier. Everything is going to be within the body, so that includes loops. While Q gets decremented and is still positive, we create our dot elements. Right. So let's move on to the CSS for a little bit. I think we can collapse the JS panel because we won't be writing any JS anyway. So on the body, we are going to start with display grid. We're going to have our dot elements. We're going to give them padding. I don't know, 1M. We're going to change this later. And then we're going to set the background so we can see them. And uh, let's also set a border radius so we can see where one ends and the next one begins. Border radius 50%, so the corners are nicely rounded. We don't want them stretched, so we're going to set um, place self center. The default is stretch. And now you can see how they're nicely in the middle. But we want them all stacked one on top of the other. So we're going to place them in the same grid cell at the intersection between the first row and the first column. Okay, and you can see how they only look to be in the middle horizontally. And that's because at this point, the body takes the height of its content, which is this stack of dots. So we need to explicitly set the height of the body to be the viewport height, which is 100, not 10. Okay. Now, we also get an ugly scroll bar, and that's because of having a margin around the body. So if we zero that margin, then we get rid of the scroll bar. Alternatively, we can also just go full nuclear and set overflow hidden. Let's also set a background here, which is not going to be quite black. It's going to be pretty dark, though. And let's also make this, uh, I don't know, some other color red, for example, just so that uh, we have a bit more contrast. And now we're going to move back here. And we're going to want to pass the number of layers, the number of repetitions, the number of dots, pass them all to the CSS as custom properties in the style attribute right here on the body. So we are going to have the number of layers as a custom property is going to take that number of layers value. And then similarly for the number of repetitions and the number of dots. So uh, we are going to have repetitions and then similarly we are going to have dots. Okay, one more thing I want to set is the tangent of the angle between the circum radius and the in radius. And let me explain you what those are. So you can see this blue circle, this smaller circle, inner circle, which touches every edge of the polygon at one point in the middle. This is the in circle and its radius is the in radius. This other red circle, the outer circle, which goes through the vertices of our polygon, right? This is the circumcircle and its radius is the circumradius. Now, the circumradius, the in radius and half the edge form a right triangle. That angle is 90 degrees, so we have 90 degrees there. 90 degrees there, they add up and give us 180. So that's just uh, one straight line right there. Okay, so this is a right triangle, which means that the angle right here, the tangent of this angle is half the edge over the in radius. So if we know the in radius, we can get the edge. And if we know the edge, we can get the in radius. But what about the tangent? Well, we can get the tangent of this angle because we can compute this angle. This angle is half of this big angle corresponding to one edge. 
So this central angle corresponding to one edge is 2 pi over the number of edges, which equals the number of vertices. Anyway, so 2 pi over the number of edges. So this one, the small one, half of it, is going to be pi over the number of edges. So get that tangent. Um, pi over, in our case, is the number of dots per layer, right? And we don't want a lot of decimals, so we are going to limit their number. And if I could type, that would be great. And of course, we want this to be a number, not a string. So that's going to be like this. And then we are going to have a style element here. And notice that this is a sibling of the dot elements. So it messes up their nth child index, which is why we're going to use nth of type. But that's going to be within a loop. So for let i going from 0 all the way to the number of layers, increment this i. And here we're going to have dot nth of type. And we are going to have after all the dots on the previous layers, which is going to be i times p, and plus 1, because the nth of type index is 1 based, as opposed to the loop index, which is 0 based. So we're going to have the layer index set to the loop index. And then we're going to have something similar, except we're going to go up to the number of dots per layer, which is p. And here we're going to have every p element and we're going to have the index of the dot on the current layer, which is going to be j. And we want to set one more thing right here. So um, this is basically going to be a k value. And um, it's going to be i plus 1 raised to a power that's going to be 2 initially. We may tweak it later. OK, so we're going to have this k value. Um, yeah, k, not i. Sorry. Okay, so having done this, uh, we are first going to compute the number of dots per layer, which is p, which we could have passed as a custom property to, to the CSS as well, but oh well. So we're going to have the number of repetitions per layer times the number of dots per repetition, and that's our p. So here we're going to have transform, rotate, and we are going to have the index of the dot on the current layer, which is j, over the total number of dots per layer, OK, times one turn. And then we are going to get um, the translation value for the current layer. Uh, and that is going to be a distance d, which let's say is going to be, let's say we start from something like 1.5 plus k times 0.25 m's. So this is pretty random and we're going to be tweaking it. But for now, let's see what we get. Okay, so um, yeah. Um, we need to decrease k. So let's say we're going to have 1.5 and we need to increase this. Let's see it. Um, let's actually increase this. Oops. Um, let's decrease this. Um, so what if I increase this even more, a little bit more? Um, actually, I think I need to just uh, increase that one. 
let's just uh, set a proper radius that depends uh, on uh, this. So let's say that our radius is going to be calc. Um, let's say it's going to be 0.5 times. Okay, so that's basically an edge. Okay, so you can see how... Um, uh, let's decrease that. Let's see how it looks. I think it looks pretty nice like that. Um, let's leave it at that for now. I think we may decrease it even a bit more. And I think we may increase this so we have a bit more spacing there in the middle. Okay, so having done this, um, let's set a different color. And we are going to compute a sort of layer progress. So we're going to have the layer index i over the total number of layers. So here we're going to have an HSL value and we're going to have something like that times 360. So we are going to go over the entire hue scale from 0 to 360 degrees. Right, and then we're going to have saturation and a lightness. We're going to make them pretty light, something like that, you can see. Um, let's also something like that. So we uh, end up with a bit more like a purple on the outer edge. Okay, and having done this, let's also make this like a position and we're going to have transform scale. Something like that. And like we had in the previous demo, we're going to have a set of keyframes right here. So an animation, we're going to go to transform and we're going to use that position without the scale. Right? Uh, now let's um, maximize this. And we're going to set an animation duration. Let's say something like that. I don't know. Okay, so here we're going to have animation and we are going to have animation duration, uh, ease and out, infinite, alternate, okay? And then we're going to want to have a delay that uh, is going to depend on a couple of things. So first up, we are going to have that f factor and yeah we are going to subtract let's say a pretty big value 9 maybe 19 okay uh, times just so that we make sure because this f value goes between 0 and 1 and we want to make sure that this is always uh, negative this delay and we are also going to have plus j over the number of dots per repetition. So something like that. And again, this is going to be... So you can see how we get something like that. And of course, we can have something like two there. And that's going to give us something bigger and of course we can increase the number of dots, right? Even more. Uh, and let's say we can have more layers. Um, right? And we can also have, let's say, something like that, right? 
or we can have something like six or nine which can, is going to look something like that or four let's see it oh uh, that makes the number there too small This looks pretty wild. Okay, um, but of course we can have just uh, one there, right? Let's refresh because something should have shown up. Okay, that's wild. Okay, what happened? <laughs> because something should have worked there. I did not break this at the very last moment. Okay, that works. Okay, I'm going to stop messing with it because weird stuff may happen. But I do hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, if you like the work that I'm putting out since early 2012 and you want me to be able to do more in the future, please consider supporting it. You can do so by being a cool cat and becoming a patron on Patreon. Or if monthly support is not your style, there's the option of the one-time donation. Or you can make me happy with a gift off my wish list. Or you could be share this to show the world what can be done with CSS these days. Because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.